What's up guys, um, welcome back to a new sort of tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, I'm just going to be like, um, explaining how uh, my pen fighter works. Um, it's a really complex game, and I'm really proud of it. Um, but I think you guys could really learn something, maybe, um, uh, from it, if I showed you guys how it works. Um, so I guess let's get started. So I'm going to start, whoops, I already messed something up in the pen um sprite so um i can find one like but uh okay um oh yeah it's right here so first thing it does when the flag is clicked is um in the game it sets the max player health to um 10 um and then uh it resets the player and so what that block does is it just puts the pen up and then it um, goes to the middle of the screen and then it resets these variables and player x is for the um, x of the player and then there's the y of the player and then the speed of the player and then the player radius which is the size and then the circle quality which I don't know if I used actually and then the player health is, the, is to the max. And then it then it says the exit to blank and what the exit is is like if you have like an exit of like you win then that means you win the game but if it's dead then that means like you're dead so that's like what keeps track of sort of like what stage it is um so then it erases all so it clears all the pen from the screen and then so forever it's erasing all and then it's broadcasting um reset and i won't show all the stuff but basically what that does is like it just resets everything and then it resets the player and then it broadcasts and wait menu okay so with the men for so for the pen menu um i used a strategy like where um so i basically did all of the menu codes and then what i did was i used variables to record uh, i just made it set the ghost to 100 and then i used variables to record the length and height of the buttons and so then in the pen, it then draws rectangles with those lengths and heights. And I'll show more about that later, maybe. But like, that's not part of the main game. Like, So then repeat until exit is greater than blank. So like, there's something else that's going on. Then um, if go equals yes, which would mean the game isn't paused and stuff, then erase all and broadcast tick. And then of course, if the player house is less than one, then it um, then it sets the exit to dead, so that the game will reset. So um, when it receives tick, um, which is over here somewhere, um, I'm just gonna find it here. Uh, whoops, sorry. When I receive tick, then it first it draws the background. So basically what the draw background block does is it just sets the pen size to something super big and then it sets everything to zero except it sets the um the brightness um it, it sort of fades see um like that so it sets the brightness to this thing where it does 10 um so plus 10 times the sign of timer times 300 and this 300 is how fast it's gonna change and then the sign just keeps it under control. And then the times 10 is how much it's going to change by. So if it's times five, then it would get um, like five smaller than five bigger and stuff. So, but it's 10. So then it sets the size to the player radius times two. So double the player radius. And then it switches the costume to the player hitbox, which I'm pretty sure is the only costume actually. And then um, it does the player movement um with an input of the player speed and so for the player movement it that input is speed so then basically this is just an easier way to do it and i don't really understand why this works but like you can just do d or right arrow and stuff um minus the left arrow and stuff and then times speed and same thing for up arrow and down arrow and stuff and then this is just so that the player cannot go off of the screen so if, like if it's less than this then it'll set it to this so yeah and then next 
what it does is it draws the bullets so I'm gonna go over here to the the bullets um, bullets data right here and so what this is for is so basically it does the same thing where it's setting the ghost to zero and I'm not really gonna explain the bullet codes because this is just some pretty basic stuff like in my other shooters for the bullet codes except so then what it does is there's these lists called bullet x bullet y and bullet size and so it each they each have each bullet has a clone id variable and so it adds blank right here when it's cloning so right so that each clone has a spot in it and then it clones itself and then it's wait waits the reload speed and stuff and so then what it does is it's replacing each item of bullet X, so the item clone ID with its new X position and Y position and size. So then when it when it gets deleted, then it replaces all of these. And so in the pen, it knows where to drop each bullet from the lists. And then if it's blank, then it knows that this bullet has been deleted and that it doesn't need to draw it. So in the draw bullets block over here, um, it will so it sets a variable called ii and ii is for like the index um i needed ii because i already had an index variable that was in use so first it cha so it repeats the length of the bullet x so however many items there are in bullet x it changes ii by one first and then it puts the pen up and so then if ii of bullet size or you can do any list is greater than blank so that would mean it it's like um it's not deleted then it just sets the pen color to something darker and then it sets the pen size to the size and then it goes to the position each like like the item ii of it and then it puts the pen down and then pen up so that it draws a dot and then it draws a smaller dot inside of it and so then that's for those bullet codes and then um over here then after it does this it draws the enemy bullets and so the draw enemy bullets are pretty similar i mean, similar not similar similar to the um player bullets now only certain kinds of enemies um shoot but what it does is basically the same thing so like that like so i'm not gonna explain it again but and then, of course, the enemies have their own enemy X and Ys, and so they tell the bullets that, and then the bullets tell um, the pen that. So, yeah, then it makes the player weapon, which is probably one of the biggest blocks. Oh, wait, that's not make player weapon. It's um, somewhere over here. It's like a bigger, it's, it's not as big as that one, but it's big. I think that's the make player weapon. Where is it? Um... It's way over here then. Um, make player weapon is right here. So, oh come on. I'm just gonna look it up. Make player weapon is right here. So what this does is if it's shooting, then it draws it with knockback. And if it's not, then it draws it without knockback. So I'm just going to explain this real quick. Um, so it puts the pen up, and then it finds the distance to the mouse. And so what find distance to mouse does is it just uses the player x variable, and then it does this function to figure out the distance to the mouse pointer from the player x. And then it also finds the direction of the mouse um, by using this function. So, because you can't just say, like, point towards mouse pointer in, in a pen, like, the for the player, like, you have to, like, do it this way, so, anyways, so then it goes to this big thing, um, this is, like, really complex, um, so I'm not really gonna explain all of this, basically what it does is it just goes to, like, the player, and, like, with the direction and everything, it doesn't have to be this complex, you could just say go to player x, I just did it this way because it's a lot more efficient, and then it just points in the direction, the direction of mouse, and then it like draws a line basically and then it does the same thing for each part of it so that's the easy way of explaining it it's 
I'm kind of um, just like summarizing it more like, oh, whoops. Okay, so then let me find the tick again. Um, so tick again. Um, so after it makes the player weapon, then it makes the actual player. So render player. Um, what Death's block does is first it um, puts a pen up and then it sets a pen size to the player radius times 2.3 and basically it just draws a circle I mean like a dot at the player X and the player Y and then it draws a few dots inside of it I mean like a, a few circles inside of it um, to make it look more realistic um, so that's what that does and then in well more not really realistic it's not like the player doesn't really look like anything it just makes it look cooler so then here then it renders the enemies this is probably the biggest block in the game it's um let's see um in this repeat there's 651 blocks yeah so i'm just going to show you the basic enemy because they're pretty similar i mean I'm not going to show you how to draw each enemy, I'll just do this one. So in the enemy, I'm not going to explain it again basically, but basically the enemies are doing some codes and they have the ghost of 100 and they're recording their positions in the enemy X and Y. So it's pretty much, it's a lot like the bullets. And so what it does is it sets the size and then and all of this, and then it just draws a square, which is a block I, I i think i've explained it in another like a pen platform tutorial if you want to know how the dress square block is uh just watch that and so then it just uses the lists to basically figure out what it is and of course this is if the enemy type equals one and of course if it's not deleted and if it's not being hit so then if it is being hit then it draws it brighter so it looks like it has knockback and stuff so yeah then in the render health bars this is exactly what it sounds like it's um render health bars um so basically it does the same thing for the as like the it's the same basic base like to do each one so it does so it figures out what the types are and each one's gonna have like a different length of the health bar and like how high it should be above the head because the enemies all look different and then what it does is um it sets the pen color to white um for like the base of the health bar and then it will draw like the actual like green part on top and it sets the pen size to eight and then so it goes to the enemy x like the eye eye of enemy x so like the enemy position minus the health bar width and then the enemy Y plus the health bar Y position. So like that's like how um, high above the enemy it's gonna be. And then it goes plus, so it's drawing from like, um, it minus to like it plus. So it's drawing a line across the enemy basically, except, but it's above it. So it's like, and then it does the pen color to red and then uh, the enemy health divided by the max enemy health um, divided by I mean times 35 so this makes it like fade from like red to green like depending on what the health is um then it just goes to here and then it changes the x by so basically what it does is it changes the x by like the percentage of how how much the of health you have so like if you only have like say your max health is 10 and you have five health then it'll only go halfway um so that's what that does and yeah so next over uh i'll get the tick thing again also um yeah so whoops i went to the other tick so there um so then it renders the player health bar which is pretty much the same thing except for the player and then it draws a crosshair i'm not really going to explain that because it's like just like a circle and then like some lines. So yeah. Then it broadcasts and waits text. Um, I spelled it wrong, but it's okay. I'm not really gonna explain the text because I use DJ Pro's text engine. So um, I'm just gonna explain my part. I did do a lot of the codes in the text engine, 
but um, it's not really necessary that I um, explain it to you. And so, yeah, this is like pretty much how it works, I guess. Um, whoops. There's a lot of stuff with like the menu that I could show you, but basically it's using these variables and it's like encoding them through lists. And so that's kind of what I wanted to show. Um, I guess I could show a few more things like the, um, um, let's see. I guess I could show how I did the, um, wait, yeah, the menu, I guess. Um, so if I go back to the when flag clicked over here, so it's doing this menu thing, and when it receives the menu, I'll just show you what this does. So the menu, um, what the menu does is, uh, if if you haven't won the game yet, then it says the game started to no, so it won't, so it's not playing, so it'll delete all the clones in here, and then it says the countdown started to no, which is um, something that it does when you click play, and then it says go to yes. Um, and then, so repeat until the countdown starts. Um, it's gonna erase all and then draw a menu, and then it's gonna wait until the game starts. So the draw menu, um, if you haven't won the game, it draws the menu background, which is just like the normal background, and then it draws the menu effects. And so the effects are a lot like, like the bullets and stuff. They're, and except they encode also their transparency, so it'll look like it's like exploding, sort of. Um, so that, and then to draw his text for this, um, one of the hardest parts was getting it to like the buttons, like see how it changes size to get the text to match that, but I'm not really going to show you that right now. And so then it draws a square and this is for, I think it's for the help one. Um, oh yeah, no, I don't know. Well, and then there's, um, this one, see it does the button length divided by two. So that's how it knows, um, what the length and height is. And yeah, I mean, this is like a really rough version of how I made this. I mean, the spawning codes, for, like, like the pen part, like, so I hope I explained this. I mean, this is, there's a lot of enemy stuff. Um, see, so it just, this is like how it waits to spawn and see, it does like this. Um, and then it does all the boss codes and then uh, starts as a clone it, if the type, and then it does all this stuff, basically. And then it sets up, and yeah, this is pretty much like the really basics, I guess, of how I made it. The player emulator also, uh, I, I think I should show this, I guess. Um, so it helps with the collision, so the enemies know if they're touching. So it sets the ghost to 100 and it just goes to where the player is. So, um, yeah, I guess this is sort of um, how it works. Uh, hope you guys learned something from this. Um, I learned a lot when I was making it. Well, I mean, I didn't really, I mean, I nobody really taught me, but like, um, like, I just, I don't know. I feel like um, you can learn a lot from this project. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, learned something. And so, yeah, um, bye.